My name is MJ Pangman. I'm the author of a new book called Dancing with Water, The New Science of Water. Why is the liquid crystalline state significant? That's where we want to go. This diagram here shows you that a crystal has an organized molecular pattern that provides channels for the flow of energy and information. This is the geometry that happens in a quartz crystal. Quartz is made of silicon and oxygen, and it forms silicon as that big round ball that you see inside these, te these three-dimensional tetrahedrons, and the oxygen atoms surround it. So in, when, when a crystal forms, you get a repeating geometry, and you can see those channels. If you were inside those channels, you would actually be able to see that um, there's a spiral created, just like your DNA helix, okay? The difference between quartz and a quartz crystal is all about molecular organization. On the left here, you see a piece of quartz. But on the right, you see a quartz crystal. It's all silicon dioxide, but what happens when those molecules organize in that pattern that I showed you previously is what makes a crystal a crystal. Organization is also the difference between coal and a diamond. Now, most people know that you need extreme pressure in order to make a diamond, right? But what most people don't understand is that that pressure causes the molecules to become more and more organized so that they can withstand the pressure. And in the process, you create the diamond. Well, molecular organization changes the properties of a substance completely, as you can see, between a lump of coal and a very clear, brilliant diamond. Crystals, and I'm talking specifically now about quartz crystals, but crystals in general have some very interesting properties. They amplify energy. They transduce energy. We'll talk about what that means. And they can process energy. That's highly significant. A crystal is able to amplify energy. They have properties that make them ideal for sound and light amplification in radios, TVs, and in lasers. And that's why crystals are used in our solid state technologies today, because they can amplify energy. Don't let this little paragraph scare you, but I'm going to read this. Albert St. Georgi was a <laughs> Nobel Prize winning scientist who was kind of a mentor of mine because of what uh, his ideas in his day were way outside the box. And he was talking in terms of quantum science way before his time. His peers actually considered him scientifically senile because he was so beyond what they could comprehend. He said, if a great number of atoms be arranged with regularity in close proximity, as for example in a crystal lattice, that's that geometry we're talking about, that special organization, Single valency electrons cease to belong to one or two atoms only and belong instead to the whole system. A great number of molecules may join to form energy continua along which energy may travel. You remember the channels we saw in the organized pattern of a crystal, okay? So crystals amplify energy because the whole is no longer a sum of the individual parts. Okay, it's more than that. It's more than the sum of its parts. So crystals are transducers. Well, what is a transducer? A transducer is able to change one form of energy into another form of energy. So crystals are able to convert mechanical pressure into electrical current and other forms of energy. Many of you may know that all you have to do is hold a crystal and the pressure of your thumb and your forefinger is enough to create an electrical current that flows through that crystal. Did you know that? But it works the same way backwards. If you put an electrical current through a quartz crystal, you produce tiny, there he goes, this man knows, tiny, very specific vibrations that are so exact that you can, ta you can keep accurate time by it. Who knows what a quartz watch is? That's the purpose of the quartz watch. The battery produces an electrical current through the quartz, produces very tiny, accurate vibrations that will keep your watch on tune forever. A crystal, we said, could also process energy. 
This is James Oshman. He's the author of Energy Medicine and also the author of Energy Medicine, Therapeutics, and Human Performance. Very famous um, book. He says quartz crystals are semiconductors. Okay, now that might mean nothing to you unless you work in solid state technology, but semiconductors are capable of processing energy and information with the capacity to look at this list of things crystals can do. Detect, switch, store, modulate, filter, rectify, and amplify energy. A number of years ago, there was an interesting article in Science Magazine. It, it, it went unnoticed by many, but they're able to put information inside a crystal and retrieve it in holographic form, even video. They had, a, they had a, a, a video of a hummingbird in its wings that was stored in a crystal and retrieved. Crystals are very powerful technology, and they're powerful because of their molecular organization, all right? Well, I told you that I was the author of a book called Dancing with Water, The New Science of Water. Water has a liquid crystalline phase, all right? No longer are we really limited to that we have solid, liquid, and gas as the states of matter. We also now are beginning to wrap our heads around this idea that there's a fourth state of matter, and it's the liquid crystalline state, all right? The new science of water reveals that liquid crystalline water is a special phase of matter. And water's repeating geometry, this is key, is the same geometry that we find in a quartz crystal. It's that same pattern, only it's oxygen and hydrogen that form these tetrahedron that uh, join together to create these channels for the flow of energy and information. Can you see that those channels are hexagonal? Can you count the six sides in the channel? Structured water, organized water, is sometimes called hexagonal water because it has this repeating hexagonal pattern, which is reflected in a snowflake, which is the solid crystalline form, okay, of water. When water freezes, it creates that pattern as well, but there is a way to create it in the liquid form. All right, the properties of liquid crystalline water are similar to the properties of quartz crystals. So remember all of those things we said crystals could do water can also do. This lovely woman is a, is a wonderful scientist in the UK. She's written a beautiful book we'll talk about just in a minute. But uh, as a quantum scientist, a quantum biologist, here's what she says about liquid crystalline, that's that special phase of water. Liquid crystalline water is involved in the relay and storage of information, in the amplification of biological symbols and in the transduction of a variety of forms of energy. Just what we said crystals could do, water is being discovered to do. In fact, that is water's purpose in the human body, to, to relay and store information, to amplify biological sig signals, and to change one form of energy into other forms of energy that may be more useful. Light energy converted into electromagnetic energy if necessary, sound energy, vibration. Water is the key, okay? Well, the water in a baby's body, come to find out, is more organized than in an adult body. In the 1970s, Dr. Raymond Damadian used MRI, which is magnetic resonance imaging, to look at the organization of the water in the human body. And what he discovered ends up being a method of detecting cancer because he discovered that cancer cells have less organized water in them than do healthy cells. So today we use MRI to detect certain forms of cancer, but most people don't realize that MRI is looking at the organization of the water. What does structured water have to do with health? Besides everything? This man, Dr. Mushik John, is the author of the book that Linwood talked about, uh, The Water Puzzle and the Hexagonal Key, all right? He spent 40 years of his life uh, researching the molecular structure of water. And as a scientist, he was the first one to kind of step out of that very stiff scientific box and say, 
hmm, we know that water has this unique molecular structure. Wonder if we can create that molecular structure out, you know, outside the living body. And I wonder what would happen if people would, could drink that kind of water. So he did some of the initial research that showed that the regular consumption of structured water was associated with things like better detoxification, a heightened immune function, better nutrient absorption, mental clarity, improved athletic performance, longevity. I mean, he really began this investigation into what would happen if you drank this kind of water. So that wonderful woman whose picture I showed you a minute ago, Dr. May Wan Ho in the UK, wrote this amazing book called The Rainbow and the Worm, The Physics of Organisms, based on uh, the underlying question, what is life? How do we tell the difference between what's living and what's not living? It really is, isn't any longer that we, that we have to have a certain number of elements together. It's how those elements are organized, all right? She used something called polarized uh, light microscopy, which is the same kind of microscopy used by geologists to determine whether rocks are in their crystalline state, whether, whether the, the crystalline state exists in rocks, okay? So polarized light microscopy, she started using this technique to look at living materials. And it was like the epiphany of her life to be able to see what happens in, in polarized um, light microscopy is that colors show up as different crystal forms exist, okay? So different crystals show up as different colors, different geometries show up as different colors. She started to look at living tissue and living matter. Drosophila um, um, larva was, was where she began with the whole thing, which is pictured here. And she noticed using this technique that the colors of the rainbow showed up as different crystalline forms became visible through this technique. Essentially, she showed that life is liquid crystalline. These colors, she said, that were being visible through the, the microscope have physical meaning concerning the shape and arrangements of all the molecules making up different tissues. And she also then said, the colors fade when the organism dies. So this shows that living matter, when it's alive, has liquid crystalline organization, has repeating geometry. And when, when a living organism dies, that organization disappears. So it's all about liquid crystalline organization. Molecular organization is now being considered a measure, actually, of life force. Life itself can be defined in terms of an organism's ability to maintain this liquid crystalline state. That's the key. In our research around water for our book, Dancing with Water, The New Science of Water, we reveal that there are two forces in nature that are prerequisite in order to produce a liquid crystal, all right? In order for water to maintain its liquid crystalline structure. And those forces are spiraling movement, which is key in the universe. You look at the spiral of a DNA. You look at how an electron spirals around an atom. You look at how the Earth circles around the sun. And you look at the spiral in a galaxy. So from the tiniest to, to the very largest, spiraling movement is key in the universe. It gathers energy, all right? And, and so it's when things are moving in a spiral, they don't wind down, if you will. Or the universe would grind to a stop. But when things are moving in this fashion, energy is maintained and gathered, all right? And the other factor that was key to preserving the liquid crystalline state in water was an electromagnetic field. Even it's a very weak electromagnetic field. These two in combination are the key to preserving liquid crystalline state, all right? So in the healthy human body, water's structure 
is much more easy to maintain because we are electromagnetic beings. And there are tiny pulses of electromagnetic currents going through this living organism all the time. We know that the blood spirals through the heart. We know that the blood spirals through our veins and arteries. And we now know, this picture, this graphic on the right is a, is a molecular graphic of uh, the protein arrangement. See how the proteins themselves are spirals creating this channel, which is the aqua color in the center. This is a diagram of the aquaporin. That's the channel that takes water into every cell, all right? And it spirals, okay? So we know that the spiral is a key. Well, outside of living organisms, it's much more difficult to maintain this liquid crystalline phase that we're talking about. But there are ways. This on the left is a Korean clay egg-shaped vessel that has traditionally been used for centuries. You will find these in many cultures. They'll store seed, they'll store oil, they'll store all kinds of things in this egg shape. Well, why? Because the egg shape is nature's gestation vessel, okay? It's the shape of a womb. It's the shape of the egg, it's the shape of a seed, because energy continually moves in a spiral in that shape. Anciently, the, this shape was used to help maintain the liquid crystalline state of things that were alive, seeds or oil or water. Clay is a paramagnetic substance, so you have the subtle combination of, of the electromagnetic fields and the spiraling movement that are so key. We've, come, we've made modern methods of doing this kind of thing. And this, is, this little machine here shows how we create a vortex, we create that spiraling movement within a magnetic field, and you can also create liquid crystalline water this way.